Hello. My name... Well, my name isn't important. But for the sake of the story, I'll call myself Tiffany. I'm a 15-year-old from Dublin, Ireland. I know you are based halfway across the world. But thanks to the internet, I can reach out to you and tell you about an experience I recently had that spooked me beyond belief. Let me start by saying that I'm not your typical girly girl. I run, I hike, and I even play soccer occasionally with my brothers. I don't scare easily, is what I'm trying to say, so I know when I get scared. It's bad. And this was bad. Really horrendously bad. I was having a sleepover with two of my closest friends. We did what most teens do when we have a sleepover. We chatted about boys, painted each other's nails, messing around with TikTok, and even looked out my window and used our phones for bird watching. At least that's what me and my friends do. It was such a fun evening, and I spent most of it in belly fits of laughter. I remember thinking how lucky I was to have such good friends in my life, and that these were the best days of our lives. My two friends then eventually got bored, so we racked our brains on things we could do. Because we were home alone, we decided to play hide and seek, for old time's sake. It had been years since we played it, and we thought it would be fun. Being 15, you're kind of in that awkward stage between partially a kid and partially an adult. It's hard for me to even type these events, as I can feel icy fear welling up within my body. Little did I know that this game would become the darkest, most frightening experience of my life. The other two girls decided to hide first, and I would count to 30, to allow them to find somewhere really secretive. I could hear them giggling away, just like we were eight years old again, and I knew for sure somebody went up to the attic as I heard footsteps on the stairs. I hadn't been up there in years as it's super dusty, and I always end up sneezing, but I guess this meant I would have to go up now. I finally finished and left my bedroom, peering around the corridor to an empty hallway. I figured this would not be like hide and seek from our childhood days, but they would surely find somewhere truly elusive that would be hard for me to even access. I decided to check the attic first, as I was confident one of the girls had went up there. I figured it was Chloe, as the footsteps were quite loud, and Chloe is a sturdy girl, as opposed to Jojo, who is a wafer. I thread cautiously up the steps, trying to hold my breath in to avoid inhaling the musty odor. I could hear some whispers, as if both girls had gone up and hid. Guys, I know you are up here. It's so gross. I said, trying to stop laughing. I just had an image of them hunched in the corner, amidst cobwebs and an old tattered furniture. I opened the attic door, and all of a sudden, I didn't hear a sound. It was eerily quiet, and the light switch was off. When I turned it on, it only illuminated a portion of the room, as it was so old. It was an old bulb, emitting only a few shards of yellowy, faded light. I noticed an old dresser in the corner, and I could have swore I saw something yellow behind the cracks in the cupboard. I knew that Jojo was wearing a yellow jumper, so I immediately knew it was her. I stood back though for a few seconds, and admired that she was brave enough to come up to the attic and find the cupboard in the dark room, and manage to not hurt herself. It almost seemed impossible, as I stood there imagining it. I also thought I would have heard her breathing or laughing, but the room was deathly quiet. As I reached out to open the handle, I had the oddest feeling I should turn, as if something was preventing me from opening it. I knocked away the crazy notion and flung the door open. At that moment, at least ten bats flew out of the old dresser, out of the attic, and right into the hallway. I screamed at the top of my voice, falling to the ground and knocking my head against an old pram. That must have been mine when I was a child. 
I thought the other girls would have ran up to me, but I laid there for around 30 seconds, moaning as I had hurt my head and ankle. Before me, however, was a vision that made my blood run cold. My mouth must have opened to fit a football through it, and my eyes felt like they had been pried open. They were wide in horror and shock. A large spider, the size of a coffee table, stood before me. But the thing about this spider is it had the face of a man. I tried to scream, but my mouth was dry with dust and fear. This creature was black with ten legs, what appeared to be antler-like appendages, and huge antennae raising out of its head. It also seemed to have large black wings that had tiny red spots all over them. I couldn't believe what was happening. Had I been knocked unconscious? Was I suffering from an hallucination? I continued staring at the creature, hoping it would not kill me, but expecting it to any second. How would my family find me? Bloodily mutilated in the attic? With no sign of anything? Or would the creature eat me and I would disappear without a trace? But still, the creature continued to stare, not indicating an overt aggression and behavior, but its posture spoke power and dominance over my now horizontal and injured body. I heard my friends running and shouting my name, and they got worried. I could hear their footsteps climbing the attic door, and I turned to see them. Now, at least if the creature killed me, I would see the faces of my friends as my last vision, and not the beast before me. When they arrived, I turned back, expecting the creature to pounce on all of us, but it was gone. There were no signs of it at all. I screamed in terror, telling them to run and to carry me. I knew the creature had to be somewhere, but one of the girls went back to check and found nothing. So too, my parents checked when they got back and of course found nothing. I began to think I was crazy, that I had made it all up. Maybe I had some sort of paranormal experience. I don't know. But after reading stories on the internet, I now believe that I encountered some sort of large insectoid creature. It was hands down the most disturbing and unsettling experience of my life. The after effects have been equally horrendous, as I have had to drop out of school. My hair has fallen out due to stress, and sometimes I can barely eat. I am due to see a counselor next week who specializes in post-traumatic stress disorder, but I'm pretty sure they're going to think I have schizophrenia, especially once I tell them my encounter. You know, the whole ordeal just makes me want to scream. That's why I'm getting in touch, to see if you can help me and connect the dots with other people who have had any sort of similar experiences, whether it be in the woods or their own houses. Perhaps you can help me get through this. I strongly believe that the whole experience I had, whatever this thing was, was entirely paranormal. Hi. I had an experience when I was only 17 years old that I have never spoken about till now. I filed a police report about it at the time, but it was never dealt with, as the town I am from was so small, the cops didn't really do a thing. I believe I had some sort of sighting of something that I can't be too sure or explain. It was Halloween of 1995, and me and some of my friends went to shoot a documentary in our local woods. Listen, I know it sounds very Blair Witch, but it was actually a documentary about the role of trees for dispersing oxygen in the environment. I am an environmental scientist, and so I've always loved nature. But I guess what I saw on that trip showed me a different side of nature, a monstrous side to it, that perhaps it can spawn things so deadly and abhorrent to us humans that it makes us want to die. Because that's how I felt when I had this sighting. And anytime I think of it, I also feel a sense of dread and fear. 
I woke up at 3 a.m. one night. I was sharing a tent with one other girl. I got up to pee, a little away from our camp, and I could see still the burnt embers where we had our toasted marshmallows just a few hours prior. I remember being a little appalled at how much litter we had created, but that was my conservationist instincts kicking in. Even back then, after I had finished urinating, I stumbled back into camp. As I stood there, just on the margins of the camp, I could feel somebody's eyes on my back. It was the strangest thing. It was as if I could actually feel two laser beams burning my back. I turned around, feeling a little spooked, and squinted to see what looked like a large spider creature in the distance. I squinted again, and the figure seemed to take the shape of a man with large black wings. There was a purring sound from the creature, and its wings flapped open, wider and wider, revealing a myriad of dark colors amidst the black. I remember feeling awestruck and terrified. I was clearly encountering something supernatural. But then, my science instinct kicked in, and I thought maybe this was some kid from our school who we had heard were going camping and wanted to goof around with us. The creature, or whatever this was, alien being, demon, call it whatever you will, it continued to watch me, and I attempted to outstretch my hand to see what would happen. I know that sounds crazy, but I was immensely curious to get a closer look. At this gesture, the creature flew away, in a vertical line into the sky, leaving a trail of cobwebs and a purple-like aura after it. It was almost otherworldly. It was the weirdest thing, and I began to think I was having an hallucination, but I knew I wasn't. It was all too real. I could feel it in every pore of my body. When my friends woke me up the next morning, I told them about it, but they thought I was just messing around. I guess 25 years later, I wonder if I encountered some unknown species, half man, half insect, perhaps some nocturnal antisocial creature that was disturbed by me and my campers. Whatever it was, I haven't come across anything similar in all my nature excursions over the years. I hope you can help me find out what this creature could have possibly been. I've heard stories of the Mothman but I don't exactly know if what I saw would count as that. Anyway, based on what I encountered, I felt the urge to write in. 2020 is the year after all of self-healing and discovery, and I know I have buried this memory for far too long over the last 25 years. <laughs>